Hello everyone, I'm Arunima from Knit and Otter and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these Asian crochet slippers. Um, this is a very very easy pattern. You just have to make a rectangle and then there's some shaping involved. So um, that's it's 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 super easy to make. So I'm just going to start with uh, telling you about what you'll need to make this and then we can get started. So I've used this troll tweed yarn by Knitfix to make this. I've used it in three colors. This is persimmon heather, barley heather, and I think this is dove heather. So this three colors is what I've used to make this. And um, this is fingering weight yarn. It is um, it is superwash merino wool, uh, about 65%, and there's some nylon in there. And I love the tweed. Uh, I've been using this yarn to make a bunch of slippers for myself, and um, it works up great. And so I have a uh, I have a bunch of other slipper patterns also if you'd like to take a look. But uh, this one will need this yarn uh, in three colors. Well, you could use uh, a single color, or you could use two colors, or actually any number of colors. But uh, this uh, to in these sections. So I think it will look good in any combination of colors. And then you'd need a so I, I've used a he, e four a three point five millimeters hook to make this. Uh, I also used a 3.25 millimeters regular crochet hook to uh, that's for the border here, this border, uh, a tapestry needle to weave in ends and a pair of scissors. So that's pretty much all you need. Oh yes, you'd also need some embellishments here. So I've used, these were some beads I found at Michael's. Uh, it was in the beading section. Uh, you could use buttons or whatever you like, or you could just not use anything. But I thought these matched perfectly and they looked really pretty. So that's what I've used. Um, uh, so let's get started. Let's quickly talk about the construction um, of this. So. As I mentioned before, this is made from a rectangle. So there's just one piece, one rectangle piece. And uh, once we build that rectangle, we make the toe here. We uh, close this bit and then we seam this at the back and we do the shaping and the border and then add the embellishments. So it's very straightforward. This this part over here was just, uh, this was a, well, not tricky, but this is the part that you need to focus on because uh, that's the important bit for shaping. Once you get that, then the rest of this is really straightforward. So this this slipper is a US size eight slipper for women's, and that's the size I'm going to be sharing in this video. Uh, you can find more size options on my blog, so please feel free to check that out. And um, let's begin. Since we have to make a rectangle, I'm going to make a smaller version and show you how to make it. Uh, it's just, this is a repeat of one stitch, so you could have as many number of stitches as you'd like, and uh, as long as you get the right size. So I'm going to start with 15 stitches and show you how it works up. But uh, if you were following the pattern, then you'd need to start with 55 stitches at this point. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So that's a fifteen chain, and I'm going to make fifteen uh, stitches in the foundation row. So I'm going to pull up a loop in the back loop of each chain. Uh, if you need help with this, I have a separate tutorial that explains how to make the foundation row. But it's very straightforward. You just pick up the back bump. So you turn your chain, you find that back bump and pick up a loop in every uh, in the back bump of every chain. So that will eventually lead to 15 loops on your hook at the end of the forward pass. So if you were following the pattern, it would be 55. So here it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. So that's 15 loops. Again, if you were following the pattern, it would be 55. You'll need 55 loops on your hook. 
Uh, so it would be a foundation of 55 stitches. So this is 15 and I'm going to make the standard reverse pass, which is start with the chain one and then yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the beginning of the row. So I'm going to stop here. Instead of completing this row, I'm going to add a different color because uh, if you look at this here, so you make this, this one row in one color and then there's two rows in a different color. So I'm going to attach uh, my persimmon header at this point. So to attach this yarn, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up and pull it through those two loops. And that completes the foundation row. So now for the next row, I'm going to make reverse stitches. So a row of reverse stitches. So what you do is you go back, find the back vertical bar of that next stitch. That's, it's a little hard with that color change, but uh, with practice, you'll be able to get it. So there, yarn over, pull through, sorry, I split the yarn. Um, and then just keep doing it for every stitch. So that's reverse stitches. So that's the first stitch, you don't have to do anything with that. And then a reverse stitch in every, stitch after. So that's the first stitch and then 13 stitches and the last stitch is made by picking up the two vertical bars on the side. So here are those, those two vertical bars and yarn over, pull through. So that's 15 loops on the hook again. Now if you were following the pattern, you would have 55 loops here. There would be a reverse stitch in every stitch from the foundation row. And yarn over, chain one and then yarn over, pull through two all the way to the beginning. And now in this, after this row, we're not going to change colors. We're going to make two rows with the same color. So I've completed this row. So that was one row of reverse stitches. And now the second row, I'm going to make a row of Tunisian full stitches. So to make a Tunisian full stitch, you'd have to find the space in between the current stitch and the next stitch. So there, that, that space right here, and that's where you'll, you'll insert your hook, and then yarn over and pull through. And do that all the way till the end, but do not make a full stitch in the last space, and I'll tell you why. So here, and then there's that last space that's remaining right here. And I'm not going to make a stitch in that. So let's count here. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we already have 14 loops on the hook. Uh, that's because full stitches are slightly offset. They are not uh, made on top of the previous row stitches. So they're made towards the left or the right. So we started uh with one stitch offset uh, or uh, we started with the stitch being a little bit offset so that's why we will skip this last space here and then we'll make that last stitch and so at the end of this row you forward pass you'd have 15 stitches you have 15 stitches or if, uh, if you're making your slippers then it, it would be 55 stitches so 55 loops just make sure that the number of loops on your hook at the end of the forward pass is always the same. This does not change throughout this pattern. So again, full stitch, a row of full stitches where you start from the first space and you skip that last 
space and you make that last stitch. And then reverse pass, yarn over, pull through two. All the way to the beginning. And at this point, I'm going to change color again, and I'm going to pick up this same color, this one, and I'm going to move this yarn to the side and then pick this up here. And that completes row two. Now for row three, again, I'm going to make another row of full stitches, but this time I'm going to skip that first space and make a stitch in that last space. So the reason for that is because the full stitches are offset, if we always start with that first space over here, the fabric would, will start tilting. And that's something we do not want. We want it to be a rectangle. And for that reason, we have to make sure that the offset stitches are once on this side and once on that side. And um, I have a separate tutorial that explains this in more detail if you need help with it. But just know that there are two rows of full stitches. The first one starts with the first space and you skip the last one. And the second one starts with the second space where you skip that first space, but you make a full stitch in that last one. So you skip that one and you make a full stitch in the next between this one and that one here and do it in every and this time we will not skip that last space and then the last stitch so we should have 15 loops on the hook so that's two four six 8, 10, 12, 14, and 15. So it's 15 loops on the hook, and then return pass, chain one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the beginning. And now we're going to change color again. So let me just quickly show you. So this is how it's looking. There's one row of reverse stitches and two rows of Tunisian full stitches. So if you look between these sort of these ridges, there's two rows of full stitches in between each ridge. Just, and this is a three row repeat. So you just keep making the same three rows over and over again. So I'm going to do this with my other color now. I'm going to join my barley header that, that's joined here. And now this is again a row of Tunisian reverse stitches. So move all your working yarn to one side and then go back, find that back vertical bar of the next stitch and then yarn over, pull through. And pick up and make a reverse stitch in every stitch. So that's one in every stitch and then there's that last stitch by picking up the two vertical bars and yarn over pull through. So that's how it's looking and I'm going to make the reverse pass the chain one and then yarn over pull through two all the way to the beginning. And I'm going to complete this with the same color and 
make another row of full stitches. So I'm going to show you the repeats one more time. And then it's just, a, you just keep following the same pattern over and over again. So you start with the first space here. So this is the first stitch and this is that next one. And then you insert your hook in between, yarn over, pull through. And do it all the way till the end, except for uh, that last space. We're going to skip that one. And we're going to skip that one, that last one right there. And then you are, pick up the two vertical bars of that last stitch, yarn over, pull through. And then chain one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the beginning. And I'm going to stop here. When there's two loops on the hook, I'm going to move this yarn to the side and I'm going to pick up this one and complete that row. So the next row is again a row of full stitches, but this time we skip that first space, go in the second one, and then we do not skip the last one. And then yarn over to through one and then yarn over pull through two throughout. At this point, I'm going to pick up the first this 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 color again. I'm going to move this working yarn the side, and then I'm going to pick this color and complete the row. If you see at the back, if you always go in the same direction in terms of picking up your yarn, you will see that these get interlocked at the back and you won't have to worry about them. And so the next rows will be a row of reverse stitches with this color, another, and then a row of full stitches with this color, and then you'll pick up this lighter one again and make a row of full stitches. So it's a repeat of reverse stitches, full stitch, and then full stitch. And the two full stitches one, you skip the first. Uh, you skip the last space in the first row and you skip the first space in the next row. So that's that's the repeat and you'll make a total of, there'll be a total of 26 sections of these, uh, the barley and persimmon heather total. Uh, that's a total of a foundation row plus 69 rows and then a final bind off row. So I'm going to show you how to make the bind off row. This Let's assume that this was the end of our fabric. Uh, and I'm just going to close this uh, here, complete the row. And I'm going to make a row of reverse stitches and then I'm going to bind off with a slip stitch. So you pick up this loop, uh, this vertical bar, yarn over, pull through as if you were making a reverse stitch and just Slip, and you do that all the way till the end. And for the last stitch, you do the same thing. Pick up the last two vertical bars, and over pull through, and uh, slip. So that's how your rectangle will be in the end. There'll be more rows, of course, but that's how you'd bind off. And I've already completed. My rectangle here. So, this is how it should look eventually. And it measures about nine inches wide and eight inches in height. And that's what you'd expect to have for a US size eight. And this, just a quick note that this curls a lot. I have blocked this so that I could show you. Well, actually, I do recommend blocking uh, your rectangle after you've completed it before you shape. But even if you don't, it will work out, but it will be so much easier to shape it if you've blocked it. And you see, so this is still curling just a little, but it was pretty much like a roll. 
when I started and that's how it was. And after blocking, it's opened it up quite a bit. And that's because of the full stitches. Full stitches curl a lot and that's normal. And if you're using the right hook size, it will, uh, it will open up uh, uh, after blocking. So there's, um, that's important to know with this because uh, when you're making your slippers and this, this curls a lot, don't, don't get worried about that. Uh, there's one more thing about this pattern that I wanted to point out, which is that this is very stretchy. You see that space in between, and that's also because of the full stitches. Full stitches are extremely stretchy. And for that reason, uh, these slippers will be a little bit on the loose side because this will stretch quite a bit once they get on your foot. And if it seems that this rectangle is small and it won't really fit your foot, it fits. It fits really well for a US size 8. It's actually a bit on the loose side because of the way it stretches. And I'll talk a little bit about how uh, to adjust that when you're shaping. But just know that this stretches a lot. And if, even if this rectangle looks small, it will, it will fit a US size 8 foot. So let's move on to shaping now. I'm going to now start shaping this. So this is how it looks and there is uh, a slight difference between how the left foot versus the right foot slipper is shaped uh, it's just different in which direction this uh, this flap goes so in this side it goes this way and the other one it'll go the other way so that's why there's that little difference so uh, i'm going to show you how to start this one and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually make the other one. So let's get started. So we begin with the right side facing up, the side with these ridges, this is facing up. And then we fold this into a third. And then this side on top. And uh, it, this, this, the last, the third panel, this is slightly smaller than the back two, and that's that's how we want it. We want it to be like less than a third. So these two are slightly more than a third, and this one is less than a third. This is how we want it to be. And then we're just going to put a stitch marker here. That's approximately how much we will seam for the toe. So I have um, threaded the needle. What I'll do is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and begin with weaving in this end. Now that's done, uh, I've just weaved in this and I'm going to weave this through the edge just like this. All the way until that stitch marker. and pull through. So this thread isn't visible because I'm using the same color, which is what I'd like. So it's not visible when I am closing this. So, so here I'm just, where is my end? Yeah. So here, this is how it is. And at this point, I'm just going to 
fold it like this and I can remove the stitch marker now and then I'm going to put my needle through here this corner and just pull this to a close so or this way and I'm going to not close it really tight because that will make it uncomfortable at the toe so this is where the toe will be so I'm going to just stop like this I mean I could pull it really tight and close it like that but I'm not going to do that I'm going to leave it a little bit loose and then I'm going to just close this And weave this end in. I'm going to leave this just like that for now. And then you flip it over and you see that this toe is closed properly. And, and then you, this is how it will be eventually. This will be folded here. This will be seamed at the back. And this is how the slipper will be. And it will be the same as this. So I'm not going to go through with it. Uh, I'll show you the other side. And you'll know exactly what to do. I just wanted to show you how to make this for this slipper. And uh, I'm going to undo this and I'm going to come back and show you how to do the other one. Here I am. I just undid whatever I did for the uh, for showing you how to make this toe for this uh, this side slipper, the left one. Now I'm going to do it for the other side. So. The big difference here is uh, for the for this one for the right side, I am going to start with folding this edge. If for the for the left one, I started with folding this first. With the other one, I'm going to start with folding this. So it's the same thing. It's just which way you fold, where where you start from, and so this is. Same thing, this is less than a third. And uh, I'm going to put a stitch marker right here. And this is the part that we're going to sew now. Uh, this will be the toe. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here again. I'm going to weave in this end before I start. I always like to do that because I I'm not fond of weaving in ends, so this is one less end to take care of. Once I complete this, here, this, and then just going to. Weave this in until the stitch marker. Here I am. I have weaved this in all the way until the stitch marker. I'm going to remove the stitch marker now and I'm going to put my yarn through here and just pull. A little tight, not all the way, and then I'm just going to sew this seam these.
and that's it. I'm going to weave this end in. cut the yarn so this is how it looks i just flipped it over and this is how it is eventually this will be folded down here so um i'm now going to seam i'm now going to seam the back here which is um this part right here so if you see there is a little bit of an overlap here and this is the part which is important where you could, while you're seaming uh, all the way until like here, you can try it on and see how it fits you with the flap folding over just a little bit. Maybe add some stitch markers and see how it fits you. If it is slightly loose, then you can always increase this overlap. So this will become smaller and it will fit you better. I think you need this length to for it to fit comfortably but if this portion feels loose if it feels like it's coming off or it would come off then you could seam it uh, you could overlap these a little bit more you could always uh, overlap them and try it and see how they work for you but um, I think if you just uh, put it on your foot at this point and try to see how loose or tight they are you will be able to figure out how much of an overlap you need so I'm going to make the symmetrical and I'm just going to overlap this one section right here. So I'm going to do that for this one and show you. Okay, I'm going to start with weaving this end in. I always do that whenever I'm seaming. It's just easier for me because I don't have to weave an end after I'm done seaming. This is the part where I will decide how much I need to weave. You could start seaming from here if you wanted to say we seam it all the way until here and then decide how much of an overlap you need. But uh, I know how much I need because I've already done that one. Uh, so I'm going to make it symmetrical. We'll start with the front facing forward and showing here. So I seamed this portion here at the back and I'm going to do this from the front as well to make sure they're uh, joined properly.
here this is how it's looking right now and i'm just going to go in the back and get my yarn to that point Okay, and then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to seam the rest of it just together like this. That's done, and I'm going to weave this end in now. Flip it over to the back. There's a slight overlap here, and this is how it's looking right now. It will it will shape up uh, like this. It's just there's just one part left. But before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to give it a crab stitch border. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is I actually the first time I made the slipper, I I folded this over without the crab stitch border, and it sort of had an unfinished look. Maybe that's because of all the color changes that I was doing. Um, I didn't like how the edge was looking right here. Everything else was fine. Uh, here was okay. But here I, I wanted a better finish. And uh, I didn't want anything standing out, uh, a border to stand out. So I just used the crab stitch. It gives it the even color. So it was it was it it ended with different colors here. So now that's an even color. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a crab stitch border. The other thing that helps, uh, the crab stitch border helps with, helps with is that it gives it this even edging right here. So if you look at this right now, because of that overlap, it's not really neat. Uh, I prefer that to be more neat, just like this. So that's why that crab stitch border right from beginning from here, all the way here and at the back, that's what, um, Uh, that's what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to start with this outer edge. Um, that's because this has to be the, the, the crab stitch border. This has to be the side facing up. So this has to be the right side for the crab stitch uh, to make sure that this is the front. So I'm going to start from here. And I'm just going to go on and make crab stitches here. Which is basically going in the opposite direction as you normally would and make single crochet stitches. Where I am at this point where there is this join. I'm going to go in as best as I can, picking up stitches here, both front and back. It's a little tight because there's two layers. The good thing about the crab stitch is that it's very forgiving. So even if you have more space or less space between stitches, it will still be fine so that's how it is just 
going to go around through the other side. Uh, there's one more advantage for making this crab stitch. If you look at the back here, there is this uh, the color changes and they're they're interlocked properly, so that's not a problem. But since this section stays at the top right here, I think it was a good idea to sort of hide them and this border gives me an opportunity to do so. I just go in the back and make sure that I'm picking up those uh, floats and I'm stitching over them. Here I've got these two ends, I'm going to weave them in and I'm going to show you how it's looking. So this is how it's looking, this uh, crab stitch border here. So this will be how it will sit. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to put this in. And so this is how it is right now. That's the toe part. This is the back all done and we're going to go ahead and sew this part here so when you're doing the first one it's easy because uh, you can just do what feels right and then when you're doing the second one just have to make sure that your left and right side match just make sure that you've got about the same number of rows uh, and the point where you're attaching them right here just count them on the other one and make sure that you get them exactly the same here so i have this and that's why uh, i can i can put this on this foot and figure out where to sew easily but what you could do is you could put this on your foot like you could put one on your foot and this the other one on the other foot and then you could put stitch markers like a stitch marker here and a stitch marker here, wherever you think you need to join. And at that point, uh, you will be able to remove the slipper and work on it uh, without it needing uh, a shape like this. So I'm going to go ahead and start joining this. Here I have my two stitch markers that I've, uh, so I counted the number of uh, ridges here. So it was like, this uh, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth one here, so that's what I did. One, two, three, four, five. So here, that's the fifth one that I've attached it with. And over here, I counted these ridges here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the eighth one. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and joined with over here so from the point that we join these one two three four five the fifth one sorry, sorry from the point that we joined here it's one two three four five so that's the fifth one so that's one two three four five six seven eight on this flap and then from this point of join it's one two three four five so here so this is how it is and I'm going to go ahead and join this here and this here and that will complete the shaping. So I'm going to do it with it on this slipper but you could at this point remove this and do it. The reason I'm not removing it is because it's hard to film this with this angle if I remove it. It'll be easier if you remove it and uh, you don't have to film uh, but I'm going to do it like this for now in for the video. I'm going to start with weaving this in.
And here I'm going to remove this stitch marker now. And I'm going to join this with this corner. And then I'm going to work on this portion here. And now I'm going to remove this and weave that end in. So this is how it's looking uh, after weaving in all ends, after completing the shaping. So this is pretty much done, unless you want to add some embellishments, which you could over here. Uh, I am going to do that and I'm going to show you how it looks fi finally. But uh, this is all there is to shaping this it's very straightforward once you understand how to do it it's just a rectangle and it's very easy to make so uh, i'm going to quickly complete this by adding these embellishments and then show you how they finally look this is how they're looking after adding these uh, embellishments uh, i really really like how they look they're nice and comfortable they're super easy to make and um you could you could actually use whatever pattern you like to make the rectangle uh, as long as your rectangle turns out to be eight inches by nine inches in size and you could use the shaping technique to shape them uh, shape the rectangles and make these slippers but i really like this pattern i like the edge uh, the ridges i like the full stitches because they stretch and that sort of that makes these slippers really really comfortable um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I have a bunch of other tutorials, slipper tutorials and other Tunisian crochet tutorials on my YouTube channel. So please feel free to check them out. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to hit the bell button if you'd like to receive notifications in the future for my newer videos. And uh, I also have a bunch of patterns that are on my blog. So feel free to check those out. I'll add a link to everything in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.